hello and welcome to Dorothy DeLay Masterclass Series. I'm Dmitry Berlinski, professor of violin here at the College of Music at Michigan State University. And it's a great pleasure for me to introduce our guest artist, who is a good friend and wonderful musician. And uh, he's uh, coming from New York, where he teaches at Juilliard School. He's a very active uh, musician. He's working with so many different world-renowned uh, instrumentalists and uh, other musicians, and it's a great pleasure to welcome Rohan De Silva. Thank you, Dim Dimitri, for your uh, introduction, and I'm looking forward to trying to help all these wonderful students who are here. And uh, Dimitri and I go a long way back. I think I've known you for, I don't know how many years, since he was 17, when we first met in Moscow, and then he came to New York. So I'm here as his friend and uh, colleague, and I hope uh, we can have, we, they, all these wonderful students will make great music, and that I will be able to just help a little bit to make it a little more, a little better. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to have two groups today performing for, for Mr. De Silva. And first group is going to perform two moments of Cesar Frank Sonata. And it's um, Yun, Miao, Yun Miao Li, violinist, and Mingu Yao, pianist. Please welcome the performer.
Congratulations. Very good. Um, tell me something. Now I want you to participate here. A um, lot of nice things. I think there are a few things we can work on. And uh, how did you feel you played? Don't feel shy. And what was it that you did well? And what was it that you could have done better? This is what we are here all to learn. So I'm going to ask you first, being the girl. <laughs> what, what, what would you like to, what did you think went pretty well? And then you decide what could have been better. You mean the very last time when the theme comes back after that? I think you have a very good point. That, that's true, very correct. So in order to achieve that, what can we do? What, what is your concept you know, after this whole huge middle section and then you come back to the theme? Is, should it be like the beginning or should it be less? Or should it be more? What do you think? Exactly. I think you're right. You're hitting the nail on the head. It, it is a memory. Mm -hmm. So the, when you come back to the recap, I think it should be a little less and maybe a little sotto voce, mm -hmm. a little almost hesitant a little bit, because then you have a place to build up the coda, mm -hmm. right? So Mingu, yeah. <laughs> what are your things that you think went all right and what can we work on in general? Okay, I'm going to jump in a little bit. Uh, for me, the balance of the, with the piano was a bit of an issue. Okay, I felt that uh, I think it was a little too much in many of the forte passages because it was very almost like as if you were playing a concerto. And I know these are big piano parts. These are uh, uh, Cesar Franco is written for. It says very clearly clavier and violin. So big piano parts, but still we need to know how to adjust, how to, this is a small instrument, you have a nine foot Steinway, and we got to listen a little more carefully so that we don't drown the violinist, whoever the violinist is, because there's a certain sound they can produce, a certain amount of sound from a small instrument, and we have this massive instrument we can play, we can cover an orchestra. But we can't do that here. This is chamber music. So this is all about playing to each other and playing to the audience and so that it has to project. So you had plenty of projection, Mingu, I thought. Uh, and I liked some of the stuff you did. But for me, certain areas when it was, should have been piano, were way too, it was like playing concerto, especially the ending. You know, da -di -da -da -da. even in the last moment when you have that passage twice, it has da -di da you've got to match the violin stroke, first of all. Whatever she is going to do, or he or she, whoever your partner is, you've got to match the stroke. So, and, uh, and there's two sequences there, right? Da -di da -da 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 -da. The first one and the second one. So what do you think? The first one should be fortissimo and the second one again fortissimo? Or should it be first one a little less and the second one more maybe? Can we try that? We'll work from the... First one a little bit less. Yeah, it's, it's almost like so for piano. I know it says forte, but I think it is important to play. It says forte, right? The first one. Play for piano. I think it should be mezzo forte for piano, and you also match that. And then the next one, tardi, and because you know, yeah, I'm talking here, here. Play down a little bit, and then play up here. Yeah. Would you like to do that? Uh, you know, pick from wherever. Yeah, I'm, I'm referring to this passage. Where can you, where do you like to start it? I mean, it's like building, building blocks. So we've got to pace yourself, you know.
that's better, better, but she wants to take a little time because she has a huge shift. Da da ya da. Where is this? There. Yeah. So you've got to you got to listen. Because you've got to give if it's it's like a great singer singing, they're not going to reach the high note. Pa pa pa. They will do pa pa ya da da. So you got to time it. You understand? It's a little tricky, but you can do it because you're a good pianist, you can do this. Okay. Can we do that one more time? Now more. Yes, yes, better, better. So something like that, you know, you just work at it and, okay. Then, the beginning of the last moment. Now, we finish the relative minor of the third movement, right? And it ends really quietly. So, what do you think should happen in the beginning of the last moment? Should it, should it be very, you give me your idea, concept of the beginning. Your, what is your, concept at the very beginning. How, how, how would you start this? Uh, it should be completely part of the struggle, struggling of the first. Okay. So it's kind of like a, uh, a terrific, it's a, a joy, joy, relief, joy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, it ends in a very sad note, right? Mm -hmm. I can't play this, but I'm mean, just going See, I heard this. Should it be that present, or should it be just sort of... I'm just asking you a question. What, how would you start that? Because it has, to, for me, I think it should come from somewhere from no, uh, at a distance. You know, but also has to have a certain touch. It should not be da di da di da. It shouldn't be every note, it should be you understand? And then she comes in, but whatever you do, she's going to uh, follow through. So you have to give it very convincingly to her, and then she will hopefully, you know. Can we try that? Right there. Sorry, I've just got to take this. This is impossible with this. Okay, so you see this. It, it goes. Uh, the color changes there, right there, right to pianissimo. So you, we got to make it happen. Whatever you do with your touch, with your, you know, pedal, whatever, and then. Then, it, see, it, nothing builds up here. It only builds up later on in measure 34. I mean, it has a crescendo going from 30 and then it has a fortissimo, but that fortissimo is just the first grand area, right? Till then, this uh, melody builds up little by little. He plays around with it. So I think we ought to make the listener aware of all this, right? The little nuances. And uh, so can we one, do it one more time and just think of all these little things that I'm suggesting. This is just uh, suggestions that uh, you could try and, try and do it as best as you can right now. I'm putting you on the spot, so so sorry about that. Yeah, see, 
see, see, see, he, she is taking a little time. I'm just going on what she did just now. So you, she's da 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 di. That's what you did, or oh, I heard that. So we, as pianists, we got to keep our ears open constantly. You know, I mean, you can discuss these things in your, in your rehearsal stuff, but uh, let's try to uh, react, to respond to what your colleague is doing, if you can, okay? So one more time, please, and we'll carry on. Very good, very good. And once you can, uh, come back to this, don't make it dee da 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 da. Don't hit it. All legato, always align, always align when you play music. It doesn't matter what it. And then lyrical. Always lyrical. Da 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 di da da. Uh, one more time from the D. Maybe we can do measure seven, uh, 18 with the upbeat, or downbeat on uh, meta, measure eighteen. Is that a good place? Got to, we got to end to a dum bum di da da dum da di da. Whatever she does, we got to be together, right? Uh, do the last two measures, please. Thirty six, da. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 but there, there, don't do, because this is going to the, that's right, the minor. Let, let the audience, let us hear it, you know, uh, right there, uh, the, the piano passage. No, the piano one first, okay. 50 with the upbeat. Also, make sure, make sure, once you hit the F sharp minor here, do not sag with the tempo. It has to still be at the same tempo, so, but relax a little bit. And pianissimo, dolce, legato. So we've got to 
get all these things in, uh, into this passage, which is very awkward. You know, playing pianissimo, dolce, legato, you know. So, but don't also to keep in tempo, mm -hmm. right? So can we please do this from 64, please? That's where the piano begins, and you come in on 65, dear. Your right hand and her is not 100% together. It, 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 for me, it feels that there's, every, it's a little bit like this. It's not really tight as an ensemble. So can, can we do that? I mean, and also, um, what's the stroke you're using? Dum, bum, 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 bum. Are you doing like a martelet stroke? Or, or, what are you planning on doing? Okay, so let's hear it. Just let's hear it. Good, good. And then for the second one? The same one, Fortissimo, what are you going to do? Even maybe more bow or something. I, you're the violinist. But I, I want you to, there has to be a difference between the first sequence and the second sequence. It, it's not all the same. Mm -hmm. understand? Whatever you're doing, he's going to play the right hand to match yours. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's do it, pick a place. And also when you, when, when you, uh, I wouldn't play this because there's no, I would, it says molto cantabile, poco più forte. So just a nice, beautiful sound, but not because uh, he da -da -da. lyrical. That's how I, I think. It's difficult, I know. It's awkward. Isn't it difficult? Maybe not for you, but. No, no. Just think of a phrase, just think of the line, not just da 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 Let's try to match her stroke. Can you play your right hand with her? Uh, bum, bum, bum. Uh, you started uh, half. Da, yeah. You know where he's starting? Yeah? Just to match this, I want, just want to hear the stroke so that both of you have the same kind of idea. Okay? Yes, actually, you sh 86. Yeah, 86 downbeat. Yeah, easier. Correct. That's where you're going to start, yes. Now. Now. 
Yeah, but, yeah, but you, 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 you got to play out. Just don't, don't, don't restrict yourself. When you, when you have to play out, you play out. She will match. You got to match, darling. Okay, one more time. Now with the, uh, both hands, please. 86. Right there, pa di da ram pam. Take a tiny break before the downbeat piano because it has to the sound has to clear. Yeah. Yeah, and also don't rush that. Dam pa pa pam pam. Because everybody rushes that we pianists do because it's very awkward. We have like a 13th stretch or something like like Rachmaninoff. So da 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 dam pam. Yeah, but put your pedal off. Dam da 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 dam up. Yes. Yes, but can you keep this a little bit like it? Pop, 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 pop. Then, so this when you have it, but the beginning of that, she has ta 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 ta. Maybe a little bit more, something a little different from your bass. Pum 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 pum. A little bit. It's just an idea. I, you know, you don't have to listen to what I'm saying, but I think so that it's all, it's yeah, a little lighter. But right there, please, on the downbeat. Yes, yes, but how about doing something? You're going to make me get goosebumps here. So in order to get goosebumps, you've got to plan it a little bit better. Wh whatever you do is fine, but right now you're just playing it so strictly because I think uh, the last one... Uh, Uh, but or then you can or do it. Uh, you can do something so that it's like <gasps> whatever you do has to be convincing. I, I didn't do it great, but Like this, so that this is your concerto moment, but you don't rush it. Don't don't go forward too much, you know. 
it doesn't matter what you do, but at the same time, don't push the tempo. Tempo has to be steady because there's nothing to say it's an actual rando, nothing. Because she's going ti da 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 di da 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 pa 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 da pa 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 da 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 correct? And then you stay at the same tempo, same uh, character for the rest of that uh, two lines, right? So let's do it ti da 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 di da 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 one thirty one please. The same thing applies to the next section. We, after that, we're going to skip. can do a little uh, heavier bum, ba, ba, bum, ba, ba, bum. yes also when you uh, come in there darling you've got to play t really by the finger uh, by the uh, bridge flat hair the whole stick for this really this is like playing a Brahms concerto you know uh, and he, there's a limit how much he can't, we can't get the pianist to play any softer. Also, when you're playing this, uh, uh, are you playing the octaves? You're not playing the octaves, why? Why? Awkward. Uh, too awkward? That's your problem. No, you have, you have got to play what's written in the music. But you didn't do that because I was watching you even before. Oh, you're doing that? Yeah, but then I want to hear the bottom note. Not to thump it, but at the same time, I want to hear it as a lot. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Let's do it two measures before, please. The, five, uh, the piano, uh, 141. Yeah. This is great for piano. Everybody wants to play this place, but at the same time, you've got to plan it down, pa pa pa, and it down, and then maybe when you start a little less of something. Something like this. I, you know, it's up to the individual, but not the. It's, it's very good. You play so well. But I think you can think more in the terms of the music. You understand? Yeah. yeah. So just, uh, and also don't have, a, uh, uh, darling, don't play this uh, in half tempo either. It has to be in a certain tempo, otherwise the poor pianist has to go. You understand? So don't expand it so much because it's great to play these long notes. Right? So don't, let's not go overboard and pull it too much, you know? So first one, please, and we've got to continue after this. Yeah, uh, first one, 141, please. slower. Otherwise, if you go, you're just uh, letting it go. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, here, right here, I know it, it's that F sharp, in some editions it's an F sharp, and some editions it's F natural. I personally prefer the F natural, it was so that... Uh, it's okay, it, it's, it's up to... Yeah, I like the F natural, so, but as long as we don't skip through it and just go straight into the... Uh, downbeat, you know, so uh, just play it with me, dear. Just um, uh, one, 180, please. Uh. Yeah, and then calm. After that, it's calm. Dolce. We are coming back to the, it's like the reminiscence, it's a dream. Again, we are dreaming these things, right? What we dreamt yesterday so that's the whole concept of this all right coda is fine but do not be careful don't get ridiculously fast at the end piano can can we just do the coda please uh, from there not do the third movement it, it takes sorry I, wait, I took all this time on, on the last movement I couldn't say anything about there were wonderful things in the third movement balance is something that we have to yeah. always wo work so especially third movement balance when you have that watery like the flowing part in the uh, you know in the water from the beginning of that yeah yeah and also when you have uh, uh, you know just a little just two minutes um, I just want to tell you uh, that's a crescendo and then it changes but don't give it away then you're giving it away and the very beginning my dear the ta -ta, there's a it should be ta -ta, not ta -ta, I, that's just a personal thing because he, he specifically marks a Achiacatura, as they call it in England, right? And both times, da -da 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 -da, that's a violinistic thing. You have to ask your teacher about that. Also, when you have, -da 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 -da, and the next one, either less or more, which, what, do you all have, what have you all decided, this one? I, for, for me, it is less, right? And then, uh, and then delay this and change the color there yeah things like that just little things and uh, so for me here the balance and it will be very much like water and she has this beautiful pianissimo dolce melody on top which she has to sing as if she has endless bow right this is, this is such a difficult moment, I, I, you know, but um, great job, you guys.
great job. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Such a wonderful demonstration. Uh, I don't want to This really g gives a goose part when you mention something about this. Well, they can do it. I kind of murdered it, but that's okay. So before our next group is get, uh, getting ready, I would like to uh, ask our professor and uh, area chair of piano, Deborah Mariarty, to come on stage and have a little conversation with our guest artist. Oh. <laughs> This is a mic for tall people. <laughs> um, so, oh, thank you. So, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for being here. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to hear you last night, and it's a very great pleasure to hear you today. Well, and also, you keep saying that these are just suggestions. These aren't just suggestions. These are gems, and you're absolutely giving them great, great ideas. Well, I'm so glad to be here. Uh, Michigan State, and thank you for having me again. Well, and, uh, we need to have you more. I would love to be here. And thank you so much for your support. Very Absolutely. important. Absolutely. So I want to ask you a few yes, questions. Sure. Because I think sometimes we get people in and we hear them talk and we hear them play and we don't really know a lot about them. And can you tell us a little bit about, when did you start playing the piano? Well, I was born in Sri Lanka. Um, I started under my mother at the age of three. Mm -hmm. And uh, sadly, I lost my mom when I was 14. So then I went and studied with her friend for two more years and uh, went to London to the Royal Academy of Music ah. on a scholarship by the Associated Board. Those are the British exams in our part of the world. Uh, in the Commonwealth countries, we have the British exams by the Royal Schools of Music. And so uh, then I was there for six years, and then I came to the Juilliard School. So uh, that's, and then I got stuck there. As a <laughs> student, now I'm on the faculty teaching chamber music. This is my 31st year. All right. <laughs> Long time. So how did you end up in collaborative piano? Because you probably weren't doing that when you were three. No. Well, collaborative piano, I, I never actually uh, did a course on it. but. I always wanted to work with people because I did a lot of chamber music because I used to play at that time, I used to play two instruments. I used to be a violinist and a pianist, ah. a double major okay. for 19 years. And uh, so in England, chamber music is a big deal. So I was playing in a piano trio playing piano and in a string quartet playing violin and orchestra for six years. So I think with uh, playing with all these wonderful colleagues of mine there, I had uh, immense uh, exposure to chamber music and uh, this is what I love doing. I love doing chamber music. I like to play with people. I'm a people person in general. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how I uh, went into it and I just love it. Well that's obvious. That's very obvious. <laughs> and just out of curiosity, how many times have you performed the Frank Sonata? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just played it last week with a fabulous cellist who was here, Zlatomir Fung. Mm -hmm. So we played a concert in, at the University of Delaware. And that was the last time I played it. Okay. And when was the first time you played it? Oh Do you remember? Gosh. It was in London. In London, London. Okay. But I played it that night with Zlatomir and the following night with a violinist, Randall Gooseby. So two day, consecutive days, but cello and violin. Two wonderful artists, so different but they're both wonderful. So. <laughs> so I've actually played it with saxophone. Have you really? <laughs> I have Oh indeed. my gosh. Yes. Recorded it with saxophone, so. Fantastic. Must Everyone have plays the Frank Sonata. Everyone plays the saxophone yes. player. And yeah. also, I heard Gary Carr, if you guys know who Gary Carr is, a sure. fabulous double, double bassist. Bass player. He played it, uh, it's like 30 years ago, I was a student at Juilliard, a little longer than that too. Uh, he played it at the 92nd Street Y. It was amazing on double bass, but he could do it. Yeah. He could do it. <laughs> it takes <laughs> not too many not double too bass many players people, are going to do that. Yeah, right? yeah. So, uh, well, anyway, we'll get to the Schubert, but thank you so much. Thank you very much. Great to have you here. Thank you so much.
So we have uh, this wonderful group performing first moment of Schubert E flat major trio number two, Chang Li piano, Yu Xin violin, Min Zhang Chang cello.
Well done. Well done. Very good. Beautiful things. Um, you know, before we say anything else, I want to first, first of all, thank you. I want to start about tuning. This is something that bothers me a lot with string players. Many string players don't tune properly to the piano. This is something that got to me immediately. Now, when, when he plays an A, listen to the vibrations. Don't just start playing the instrument immediately because this is something that every, uh, most violinists do. The moment they tune, they ta, ah, 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 and then they go up and down. And they never listen to the pitch. And so you're in invariably not in tune with the piano, for me. I heard that at the very, it's not your playing. I'm just saying when you tune the instrument. Same thing happens to cellists. They just tune and they try to see the, the, uh, listen to the oscillations and, right, and get the highest point and then you tune very softly. The big artists, they hardly tune. They just come, you give them a little A, they just pluck the string, some of them. They don't tune because it's already in tune. But this is something different. So can we just try that? Just give an A, just a soft A and then you tune, darling just to make sure that you're exactly in tune with the piano. See, you're flat. Way flat. No, let's do violin first and then, because this is, I think, very important in, when you're playing with piano, because you've got to. Up to you, you tune. I'm listening. <laughs> Don't ask me. Bravo. Why are you sweating? Only balance. Balance. We have to work on Just don't get panicked about this because I, I yeah, just, uh, just something to be mindful of when you, you're playing chamber music. Okay. So sorry to take up. There's some wonderful stuff we all did. Listen, um, for me, there was a balance issue as well. And tell me, what did you feel comfortable? I want you to talk now. What did you feel not comfortable? That's how we are going to try to make it a little better. We'll ask the, our two string players first. Is there anything that you want to think that you could do better or, or you did? really great and okay then I'm going to ask our friend <laughs> you played wonderfully He's just all of you all did but I just want to know what was uh, what could be 
helpful. I think the general temple, we, I, I, I'm sorry uh, to talk about for the temple, um, but maybe in the Greek crowd, yes. we just, uh, the temple is not. The recap, yeah, which yes. is okay. way after. Okay, why don't we do from the beginning? Because I feel that sometimes you guys uh, are not in the same, same groove of things. In, uh, well, let, let, let's start from the beginning. I, I just want to. Start again. Together. Who, who is giving the lead? You are giving the lead? Yeah. Think two measures before you give the lead. Okay, good, good. Now, is there any way? Tara pa 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 pa. There. Don't hit. I feel that your the sound, the beginning is nice. It's almost like asking a question. And then, yeah, you're getting a little heavy, sort of little, you're playing from here instead of shoulder weight. Should be just, you know? Yeah, yeah, from the beginning. I'm going to be very picky. Sorry, sorry. Ta ram pa pa pam pam. Not ta ram pa pa pam pam. Is it? Is that what you want to do? What have you all decided to do? We decided to make Pam pam. Right? Yeah. So I want to hear that. He does it when he has the thing a couple of measures later, but I don't hear ta ram pa pa pam pam. Pam pam. Right there. Can we uh, let's do it takata 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 ti ra ra ri ram pa pa pam pam. Yes, right there for me. Takata 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 tam. You have two chords. No, right here. We are doing it from here. Oh. I'm not used to these iPads. Okay. Pam pam. What's the, what is the reason to go forward too much here for me? I hear pa ram pa pa pam 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 pam. You can go forward here a little bit. Pam 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 pam. But ti ram pa pa pam pam pam. But I think ti ram pa pa has to be still in the tempo. And you you can if you want to go forward. Pam 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 pam. Right? Can we please do it? Uh, yeah. Okay. See the measures here. Okay. Yeah. Also, the second beat, pump, pump. I feel it, that I, you guys are almost rushing. Pump, 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 pump. Right. So. 
right there, the first one of them, pam, pam, pam. Yeah. Thirty-three, pam, 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 pam. You just play, just right, right here, right here. Yeah, see, I, I for me the pam 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 fa, it's a little bit almost hesitant. I know it is hesitant, but I don't hear uh, pam dum pam pam. The downbeat has to be absolutely uh, not only together; it has to be precise. Pam 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 The down because the previous beat is forte, right? Pam 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 pam. So, and also maybe you can play out a little bit for that uh, piano, a little more. Same place, same place, same place here, here, here. Okay. We're doing this right there. Yeah, the, the, it's a downbeat. Pam, pam, pam. Tiram, pam. Whatever you're doing. Is, are you playing an up bow there or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, maybe a little bite, a little more bite from both of you. One more time, one more time. You got to get it. You play so well, so why is it? Let's do it from the chords here, right there. Dum bum. Bum bum bum. That measure. Come on, guys. No, 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 it's not together on the downbeat. Okay, the trill, trill measure, please. The piano 16 notes passage. One, two, three. Now there, I, can you play your passage for me, please? Pam, 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 pam. You know the famous, yeah. Yeah. Now, question. Da, ya, pa, pa, pa. Why is that accent? And also, dam, pa, 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 pam, pa, 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 pam, pa, ra, pa, pa, pam, isn't it? Pam, pa, ra, pa, pa, pam, pa, ra, pa, pa. Right? Isn't that what's written? No, not ta ra ra. Ta ra pa pa pa. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it is dotted. Yeah. So I'd like you to see whether you can. You can do it. You play so well. There's no problem of you doing it. But just play what's written in the music. One more time, please. Three. Yes, there. Pam, 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 pam. Yeah, there. I, I want you to do something there. Pam, 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 pam. The B flat. The B go. Uh, sounds with the color. With the color. You got to do something there. Otherwise, it sounds. It's all the same. Yes. Yeah. But as long as you, you make it. Over. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Great. Great. Now let's hear it from the. Uh, uh, let's do that running passage again. Trill, please. Thirty-eight. No, 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 no. Why? Uh, please count. It's not difficult. It is got the difficult part. Thank you. 
Okay, good, good. Now, can I just hear the, just the violin and cello? I'm, I'm sitting here, so it's a little bit different sitting in the hall. I, I, you got to, you got to play what's written. I mean, I, I, I love what you do, but <laughs> I think that's not what's really written by the composer, right? And even it's easier when we are doing it kind of legato. But that's not specific, okay? Okay, let's do it from the first one. The downbeat, that's 68. I know, 48. He's not playing. Yes, see, your, your harmony. So I, I, I wanted to sort of hear the different, different keys that you're going through. So instead of just playing, you understand? So make, a, make it aware for us to hear all these beautiful harmonies, although the piano has beautiful, uh, has a great melody there. So let's do it with the piano and just, you know, emphasize certain things, I think. your crystal clear sound very much but it's a little too much here because it's not mezzo forte or forte right down just to sound like bells yes maybe a little lighter okay for my cup of tea right now but uh, you know it sounds great over there but I think it, it has to have a lot of variety this is Schubert and it's, it's all like you know very delicate stuff so can we just do it from tam da 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 da? What is that? This uh, eighty-four, please. Yes, yeah. So see, this is an arrival plan. Da 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 so don't, the crescendo is only going to a forte. The next one is the one you get the old ladies to jump off their seats. Bam, ba, di, ram. Yeah, and the same thing applies here. Bigger break. So same place, please. Don't rush. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, see, you can do these things, but you know, I also when you start here. Uh, oh, I don't play this. Yeah. 
And this is, has to be the, like a drum roll. Da -da -da. You're, 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 you're doing I can see you're playing from here you're too good of a pianist to play from the wrist and here instead of shoulder weight not that becomes a little rough you understand so one more time carry on uh, strings please from there I think this is some of the most beautiful music here. Ra -ya -ya Darlings, play it from me, the cello, uh, followed by the violin, please. De -da 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 -da. Just the cello, please. Wait, 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 wait. So I, da -ya -da so what are you doing there? Are you doing sudden subito piano on the G? No, you got to change the color which you are doing, but it's not enough for me. I mean, take a little time. It doesn't matter. He will adjust. Pianist will adjust. We have that's part of our job, right? Well, one more time. With piano, please. Okay, right. This is something that uh, bothered me earlier on. Now, uh, cello, darling, tell me. Now, um, you're starting with no vibrato. Is that what you're doing? And then when do you vibrate? Have you thought about it? One bar before? Violin come in, okay. So how many bars are you not vibrating? Three. Maybe you should cut it down a little bit. Yeah, can we do half of that maybe? <laughs> Instead of like three measures, I thought you were going into sort of, you know, I, I, yeah. yeah. I think it's important to have vibrato on notes. I, 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 I feel very strongly about it, but that's fine. You can have certain color, that's fine. Fine. So let's do it from there, yeah? Wait a minute. No, no, you, no, no, I want to see what you're... You're not playing that chord, why is that? That's part of the music. He, he forgot it, that's okay. Okay, yeah, now here. Uh, can we play it please? Just, uh, oh, the, 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 and the violin, just one measure and violin comes in with me. Give me a lead, darling. Okay.
Yeah. yeah. I, I, all I'm doing is trying to sing this area instead of just plowing through it because it's got so much beauty in this. E, da, de, da, de, da, da, de. I want to hear it. And then the piano takes over. And expand a little bit within the, within the context, within the phrase. You can do a, a look at this. And then, you know, so just something like that, so that it's not, because it's such a long moment, you've got, there are mo moments here where you can really, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, give it a little bit of a, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm looking for a word, just uh, play the music, that's it. Okay, one more time, for cello solo, and then the violin comes in, please. Good. Now, cello. Can can you can you uh, that and then down. Play, play the chords. Play, play your piano part. I, I need a little bit more the pizzicato on that. Palm. Yeah, but that you 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 do the crescendo. So she will support it by giving you a bigger, slightly bigger pizzicato. You know, just a, a warmer pizzicato. Okay, right there, please. Right there. Yeah, so why don't it? Yeah, just do something with the notes. They're, they're not just passing notes. They're, they're just, yeah. It's not. It's da 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 da. da. It's not together with that downbeat. It has to be da 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 da. Am I? Did I hear it wrong or something? I, maybe I'm hearing it wrong sitting here. Can we do a, there from the downbeat? Dum da 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 da. No 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 no. It has to be together. Dum da 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 da. This is not difficult. Yeah, but violin. Now, when you lead here, those for for those chords, you're a little too shy. You know, don't feel shy, darling. Just Bum. You even if you have to move the violin, don't move it too much. But what I mean is, move your body. Don't just not a little nice. You know, it depends. The lead has to be something to say what the next chord is. If you are going to do something like, then it can be a fortissimo chord, right? It's not never going to be that. So don't feel restricted. Okay, don't feel restricted. One more time. Uh, let's uh, that one. There, what is it? Uh, 170, please. No, 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 170. 170. Mm. Okay, one more thing, because 
I, I know you, you are doubling with the violin, so not too much. We, yeah, because she's got the. So don't play too much. You've got to balance it so that it's not like drowning her. Da -da 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 yeah. Yeah. One more time. This is what I heard. That one, the G flat, I think one, two, three. Place that and do something with the color because I think we are not hearing that sort of a dark, whatever the notes are, right? From, from there, please. Very good, very good playing from piano. I don't know, it sounds wonderful here. Does it sound wonderful out there? I'm sure it does, right? Very beautiful. Okay, now um, the same thing here, which you did. See, the, the, the composer puts one, then, and then adds that. Okay, so. This is sort of what is the character here, what, which you are doing beautifully. Have you thought about it, or you're just so talented that you're just doing it? No, no you are. I mean, uh, I think um, this part is special, uh, definitely because it's special. Yeah, I know special, uh, but w special is just general term. So what what are you uh, trying to? I enjoyed what you ha what I heard. So I'm just curious whether you're aware of what you're doing. Sotto voce. Yeah, I think so. um, um, this part uh, repeat like three times. Yes. And the first time maybe I was just uh, show up a little bit with the left hand but, and just the left hand is the after each of the extra chords the violin solo. Yes. Until it comes in. Until there, right? And then we, as we know, then. Yeah, and all these fortes are caressed fortes. They're not sort of punched out fortes. You know, in Schubert, I think they are. Depends. In this particular area, I think 
it has to be all like cellos and basses. And those fortes are nice, weighty, weighty fortes. You understand? So not sort of punched out. Even the accents are nice accents. They're not. <coughs> okay. So carry on. Let's do. Uh, no, let's do. Uh, this is all the same, isn't it? Oh, just before the recap, the bridge passage. Okay, uh, pick a place. Like three hundred and what? Three hundred and sixty-five, Okay. Right. I want this done. Oh. By the cello. Oh. Okay. Let's just do this is for practice purpose right here. Your left hand and the strings just play your part. Just your forget the triplets. Now do, let's do it all together. I mean, when you rehearse, do, do you rehearse passages like this? Like this? Yeah. Do, you do? Yeah. I mean, not this passage, but sometimes you just play only one hand and you get the strings to play with you. Not too often. Yeah, but it helps actually. Then they also learn to put, uh, listen as well. I, I think it helps when you're doing chamber music. Anyway. Uh, okay, now from 360, whatever, 365, please. together. Was it together? No? no. I, I don't think yeah. it was together. Okay. Yeah. So just a couple of measures before. No, the first one. Da da ram pa pa pam pam. Okay, good, very good. Can we just skip to the end, the very end? I just want to hear the very end. Uh, last 12 measures, maybe I don't. I'm just counting One, one last thing about the, la the very, very end. Why don't you play, just try this. Just try that. So you do that, you all play in tempo. Just try it. I'm just giving a suggestion. Yeah. One more time. Yeah. 
Bravo. Thank you so much. You guys are great. Well done. Thank you. Beautiful play. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Rohan, for wonderful coaching. Beautiful Thank demonstrations. You. <laughs> Thank you. These guys are great. All of them. So wonderful. So before we end, bravo, bravo. Yes, play very well. <laughs> we have a few more minutes before we end. I would like to yes. talk to you briefly. Sure. As you know, this uh, masterclass series are named after oh. Dorothy Delay, my she, mentor, to commemorate her legacy and memory. And she was a graduate of Michigan State University in 1937. And it's wonderful that. Uh, you are here because when we met, I remember you were really, really close to Ms. Dulay on the personal level and professional level. You work with practically every student of Ms. Dulay, which that's is already that's a, a, a very long list of students. <laughs> yes, I, and most of them became international stars. Absolutely. Uh, soloists, concert master of the orchestra, chamber musicians. Of course, you're Regular partner is Mr. Paramount. You've been working for almost 30 years. 22 years. So he's a, one of the most, of course, uh, well-recognized students of Ms. Yes. Delay. So I would like uh, you to talk a little bit of Ms. Delay. And also, I'm curious from this experience of working with her students who are all very different. Very different. What is, what's something in common you find? And uh, what is something unique in all those artists? from your experience of performing with them, as you, as you mentioned even recently, you play the same piece with the different musicians and it makes very different interpretation. Yes, actually, uh, regarding Ms. Delay, she was like a mother to me and she was my mentor. And today I'm in the United States due to her and her work to make sure that I stay here. So I'm very thankful to her wherever she's up there. And I know she's watching over me because she opened many doors for me. Introduced me to Isaac Stern, who I played and had lessons and coachings with, with uh, quite a few people. And uh, she was the, as I always refer to her as the queen. I always call her the queen. Um, because she was a spe very special lady. She knew in her teaching I mean, sometimes we used to have lessons at one o'clock at night. Dimitri, you know, you know, that's, she taught till early hours of the morning. And uh, what was so special about her being, other than being a great human being, was that she knew what not to say to a student. If somebody did not play well, she would not say to that person, well, go and practice and go and do this. So she knew exactly what to say, but give encouragement, not to say that they were wonderful or anything like that. She will, her way of saying the encouragement is, good for you, honey. And I used to think, what? You know, she was, she was an extraordinary woman who knew, she was like a magician, and she used to just put the icing on the cake with the really, really good ones who are having major careers now. So she was, this is something that I learned. You also learned that, right? If she thought that you have to do some work on a certain passage or something, she'll talk about it very, very sweetly. And she was always with a smile. Never, I never saw Miss Delay angry. So uh, to her students, including myself, she was a very generous person with her time. Her time was bizarre, but she was always uh, there for you if I had a problem um, musically, personally, to discuss with her. And if she didn't have an answer to give me, she would say, sweetie, I'll call you tomorrow. I'll let me talk to Eddie. That was her husband, who was like her confidant. And she would always give me a call the next morning. So she was a very special person. For me, you know, it's a different era. And that era is gone. So. Yes, you were talking about uh, me playing the Frank Sonata twice last week with a cellist and a violinist. So, you know, as a collaborative pianist, our position, we have been made to, I mean, I'm just used to this. 
is to adjust to people. You've got to be adjusting constantly, listening, and trying to understand what he or she is communicating to, with you. So that is something that I think over the years of the experience that I have, I bring it to some of the younger artists and, uh, and sometimes I discuss a matter with them, sometimes I don't, I just leave them alone and if they are playing something that is convincing, I, I will buy it, I will go along with it and there are some who can do it, like the two artists I was playing last week. You know, now there is, for instance, Dima and I played a recital last night. We just rehearsed once, and no, we rehearsed a lot, but one piece we rehearsed once. One piece we rehearsed once, yes, <laughs> which was the Ravel Sigan, yeah. right? And uh, we just said, oh, we will just have fun with this, and we did. So there, there's sometimes you know the person very well because you breathe like they do. It's all about breathing in music, and. Um, for me, I think I've been very privileged to have wonderful young talents play with me. I mean, some are extraordinary. I mean, in, they are in their, like 20 years old, 21 years old. I don't want to mention names here, but uh, absolutely fantastic. And they will have major careers, hopefully. And, uh, and of course, all, throughout the years of my uh, partnership with uh, Mr. Perlman, I have become a better artist. I'm learning from him every single time we play a concert. We don't have much time to rehearse uh, because he's a very busy person. But when we do rehearse, even if it's once before the concert, it brings me to a different level that I cannot explain in words, you know, with his musicianship, with his artistry. It's, it's remarkable. It's something mind-boggling and I, I'm mind-boggled even after playing for 22 years with him. So, and even the younger ones, the, the younger talents now that have, uh, that are playing concerts actually, they're remarkable. Not just the technical wizardry that they have, even in their intelligence and their way of communicating. And sometimes, you know, most of them we don't, uh, we don't talk, we just have a good time. We play and we just look at each other and have a smile and then we go on from there. So, uh, and I'm very lucky, and I, I owe a lot to Mr. Lay, you know. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank you so much it's for a, having me. It's the best way Michigan to State. describe Ashley yeah. uh, Mizulay personality she, and what she was doing. It was yeah, it was remarkable said. what she did for her students. And she had the best students coming from all over the world. You know, she was, uh, as Dimitri knows, we all knew, you know, she will schedule students from 10 o'clock in the morning, and she used to, sh uh, because she used to teach till late, till 1.32 sometimes in the morning. So she used to go home very late and then she used to come to Juilliard around 3.30 or 4. So all these students wait from 10 o'clock in the morning and after a few couple of weeks they know that she's not going to be here so they don't show up. But if she comes for, for some miraculous thing that she comes at 1 o'clock, nobody's waiting for lessons, nobody's there. So then we had to go and call people saying, come on for your lesson, you know. But she had a remarkable studio and her assistants at Juilliard, she had six of them when I was there and they are all individual professors in their own right and uh, wonderful and they taught every single student of hers as well as theirs. So everybody studied with, um, uh, a lot of people studied with Dorothy Delay and her assistants. Very few, really a handful just studied with her, just a handful. But those were the big stars now, you know, and uh, you were one of them. So I remember she was so excited when you came to New York. She was really, yeah, I mean, she heard you. It was the, was the reason why I came yeah. to New York because she invited me. Yes, she invited you, I know. And you know, she used to, when she was traveling during her heyday, when we were fortunate to be with her, you know, she used to go and judge the Queen Elizabeth competition or the you know, one of the big Hanover competition, then the um, Indianapolis competition, and then she used to always find the top talents there. And they used to always come near her. And then she would say, why don't you come to New York? And then, you know, before anything else, a <laughs> couple of months later, they have, they have, you know, come to New York to study with her. So she was remarkable. And how she was able to 
get students and they all wanted to study because sometimes people used to come from overseas for a lesson like from Korea, Japan, China, you know they come all the way just for a lesson and they still have to wait for five hours but they used to wait. she used to give them the lesson. You know, remarkable lady. I think we are very fortunate that we were able to, uh, you know, that she touched our lives and I'm always in, indebted to her for the rest of my life. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Rohan. It was wonderful you. that you were Thank able you, to come here, you. perform and teach. Thank I'm you. sure it was very meaningful for everyone. We look forward to your future visits and yes. definitely looking forward to your concert with Mr. Pellman in May. Yes, I'm coming here, here to Wharton, Wharton Center. Center. Yeah. I think it's like, I can't remember the date, it's May, in May. May 6th or May 7th. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So looking forward to seeing all of you there if you can come. So Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs>